pass the floor on to the distinguished representative of Azerbaijan. Thank you, Chair. I'm delivering this statement on behalf of my permanent representative. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, at the outset, Azerbaijan expresses its gratitude to the UN and the Swiss government for convening this conference, which is indeed dedicated to the very important issue. Historically, there have never been cases of extremism, anti-Semitism, xenophobia, religious intolerance and racism in Azerbaijan, and this situation continues until today. Our country is renowned as a place with traditions of ethnic and religious tolerance and peaceful coexistence. Azerbaijan condemns violent extremism and terrorism in all its forms and manifestations. In this regard, we welcome the initiative of the Secretary General to develop the plan of action to prevent violent extremism. Ladies and gentlemen, the statement made by the Armenian representative today again contained traditional absurd accusations against Azerbaijan. The mixture of different irrelevant, inaccurate and inconsistent issues in the statement of the Armenian delegate indeed stand firmly against the background of irrefutable facts testifying to the opposite. This is, of course, the clear indication of a current dire economic, political, social and military situation in Armenia. With regard to the refugee issues that was raised by the Armenian representative, it should be highlighted that the Armenian government misused the miserable fate of Syrian refugees in its own malicious political interests to promote the illegal practice by trying to settle Armenians from Syria in the occupied lands of Azerbaijan in a grave breach of international humanitarian law norms. We have already informed the UN Secretary General and the UNHCR about this. Speculations on the fictitious anti-Armenian hate speech in Azerbaijan are also beneath all criticism. The thrust of the statements of Azerbaijan is to call on Armenia to release the occupied Nagorno-Karabakh region of Azerbaijan and its seven adjacent districts. As for the hatred, it suffice to mention that Armenia, by implementing a policy of ethnic cleansing of all non-Armenians in its own territory, forcibly evicted the only Muslim ethnic group in Armenia, that is, 250,000 ethnic Azerbaijanis at the end of the 80s. In the meantime, Azerbaijan has preserved its ethnic and cultural diversity to the present day, and there are 30,000 Armenians living in Baku alone. Further, it's ridiculous that with all belligerent and inflammatory rhetoric and hysteria of the government of Armenia, which only promotes the pulse of aggression, it lectures others about the glorification of the criminals' issues. The international community is well aware of the criminal activities of Armenian terrorist organizations such as Asala and so-called Justice Commandos, as well as about the continuous glorification by Armenia of its own terrorists such as Varujan Karapetyan, Monte Melkanyan, Drastamat Kanayan, the Nazi general Karekhen Nizdeh and others. Furthermore, it's very regretful that the Armenian government continues to use such terrorist organizations for their subversive actions against Azerbaijan and other countries. As regards the very recent military provocations by Armenia, we would like to state that Armenia has received a very strong response from the Azerbaijan army, and if the Armenian government does not put an end to its pulse of aggression, as is foreseen in the four UN Security Council resolutions, the consequences of this country the consequences for this country will be even worse. In this regard, Azerbaijan reiterates that the primary reason of the tension in the region is the unlawful presence of the armed forces of Armenia in the territories of Azerbaijan. The Republic of Azerbaijan calls upon the international community to condemn Armenia on its blatant violation of international humanitarian law. Azerbaijan will spare no efforts to ensure peace and justice in the region. Thank you, Chair.